the screenplay, among other anime luminaries. This show was so successful that a whole series of anime based on world literature, World Masterpiece Theater, was started up by Takahata and Miyazaki. Miyazaki went on to make two more prominent series during the 1970s. One was Future Boy Conan, Mirai Shonen Conan, in 1978. Miyazaki's directorial debut, it's the beginning of a really illustrious directorial career. Set in a post-apocalyptic world, it showcases Miyazaki's talent for making serious, human, yet essentially hopeful shows, even with plenty of apocalyptic elements thrown in. The other Miyazaki hit of the 70s was 1979's Lupin III, The Castle of Cagliostro, a movie based on the Lupin Tree TV series, which in its own right is one of the enduring series of the time, with a relatively big Western fan base. This is a classic, Steven Spielberg has even called it one of the greatest adventure movies of all time, to quote the blurb. Miyazaki is usually impeccable and sprightly in direction, so it's no surprise that even in the context of a caper, he shines. The 70s were also the time of the birth and proliferation of the mecha genre. The progression in 70s mecha series is often described as a shift in sci-fi anime from the magical superhero type plots of the super robot genre, like Giganto in the late 60s, towards more realistic space operas with fuzzy morals and complex plots. 1972-74's Mazinga Z is often categorized as one of the major super robot hits. A super robot is basically what that sounds like, a super powered, gigantic machine or construct often piloted by a young and daring hero, and often with a mystical or legendary origin story. For instance, Mazinga Z was built by a Japanese doctor Kabuto to combat the mechanical beast that Kabuto's German colleague, um, Dr. Hell, finds during a Mycenaean archaeological dig. There is a really funny opening song. A lot of the stuff in here will crack you up in a classic cartoon sort of way, like the villain controls his minions with a crab stick. And right from the start, he has a quote unquote intersex sidekick, Baron Asura, who is literally half male, half female, split down the middle. This show got a remake in 2009, Shin Mazinga. This show is often considered remarkably story driven, and like the best remakes, it keeps most of the original's madness far few tonal translations. Dr. Hell is more tragically melancholy now, while his intersex partner is also less comical, and gets so much screen time here that this person is sometimes considered the real star of the show. From the same period, 1972-74's Science Ninja Team Kachaman, or Kagaku Ninja Tai Kachaman, is a sort of cross between Captain Planet and Power Rangers. Like Mazinga Z, it has a hermaphrodite major villain, which, uh, well, I don't know what that means. Each of the five main ninjas has their own special powers and mecha, and when their mechas combine, they get a super mecha vehicle. The turning point from the super robot genre to the real robot genre is 1974's Space Battleship Yamato, also known as Space Cruiser Yamato. This show is major and really good. Like Ashtano Jo, the mood is post-apocalyptic and Martian, with a real sense of scale and grit embodied by scenes of the battleship rising from liquefying earth and a sparse, empty sound track filled with urgent voices that fit with the post-apocalyptic setting. The most famous series from this time is probably Mobile Suit Gundam, which was marketed at the time as a pretty story about real war. There's plenty of intrigue, and from my reading of some of the director's comments, it is clear that he had an understanding of war and its machines that was really good. The director was Yoshiyuki Tomino, and he even compares the human approach to machines of war as similar to the Japanese worship of Buddhist statues, and the relationship between pilot and machine to the relationship between F1 car and F1 driver. I feel like referencing Chris Hedges' wars of force that gives us meaning in this context. This is real robot genre for sure, and one of its cornerstones. In 1977, Star Wars took the world by storm and changed the market completely. Both Yamato and Gundam the TV series did alright, but their movie remakes were released pretty much in the shadow of Star Wars. Space Battleship Yamato in 1977 was pretty much a condensation of some TV episode with a newly made ending. The box office takings had two 